on the Christian right, it's mainly on the white side and Christian left, mainly on the black side, but the color's not the issue. It's the, the merging yeah, it's of politics with the gospel. This isn't to single out any one demographic. I just think the bigger picture for the body of Christ is we can't allow politicians to grift. A few weeks ago, Dr. Michael Brown put out this amazing video and I've been meaning to react to it. So we're going to get into this today, but what, basically where he talks about when the Christian left gets in bed with the Democrats. I do think the Christian left has gotten a pass. And again, I'm not, I'm not on the right. I'm not on the left. I have no stake in this, but I just enjoy the discourse. But I feel like the Christian left has gotten sort of a pass on this, especially in the black church. And what you'll find in this is a whole lot of them. So we're going to check out this video when the Christian left gets in bed with the Democrats. And this is a good warning, but before we do, do me a quick favor, hit that thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. You know, I've written a whole book about the political seduction of the church, and, and I talked a little bit about the Christian left, but I was mainly talking about the Christian right. And for the most part, it was white evangelical Christians that I was speaking about. The fact is, this sword cuts both ways. It really does. And there's a political mm. seduction of the left. In fact, I, I would say it's not even a seduction. It has been, in that sense, an open, adulterous affair of merging politics with the gospel in an unhealthy <laughs> way. Look, I've said for years, we should be involved politically. We should be salt and light in every sphere of, of life and society. We should have an impact. We should be involved by all means. But when we join politics with the gospel, it becomes unhealthy. That merger is unhealthy. And I want you to see how radically and dramatically it happens on the Christian left. Look, you get a well-known Christian pastor endorsing a political candidate. So a conservative Christian pastor endorsing a Republican candidate. People are like separation of church and state. And this yep. is Christian nationalism. You're just trying to take over. And I agree with that. But if it's down on the left, for example, if, if Bishop T.D. Jakes, openly endorses Beto O'Rourke, which he did enthusiastically, and he could be at his church, and, and people are fine with that. <laughs> yeah, nobody, uh, nobody even brought a Candidate in Georgia, Stacey Abrams, be at his church and encourage everyone to vote for her. That can be done, and you don't have the media shouting separation of church and state, Christian nationalism. So I, I want to just illustrate this for you. I want you to see this with your own eyes so you can see the double standards, so you can see how the hypocrisy, how you can this see the same good. media that would go berserk if we did something like this in conservative Christian circles with a Republican candidate, it's not even looked at. In fact, it's, it's more celebrated when it happens on the left. So here's the first clip. And most of these involve Pastor Raphael Warnock, who is the current <laughs> senator in Georgia and is running for re-election right now as I record this video. So here's a Baptist pastor praying over him in a church service, praying Psalm 23 over him, saying that God has given this, him this assignment and likening him to Moses in the Bible, to Nehemiah in the Bible, to David who fights Goliath. Yeah, this is at a, a church service. Let's watch. We thank you even now for how you have given him this assignment. And we pray even now, God, that you will go before him, be his shepherd, be behind him with goodness and mercy, be on the right and on the left with the rod and with the staff, be beneath him as a solid foundation, but anoint even now his head afresh with oil. We give your name praise. We give your name glory for a Nehemiah that is building, for a David that is willing to stand against a Goliath. We thank you right now. Whoa. He said for a Nehemiah, for a David. I beg your pardon. What? Come on now, dog. Come on, Oh, man. my goodness, bro. You see, now let's let's keep it real. Let's, let's just be real for a second. So I just want to be fair-minded because I, I'm almost certain, and I, I got to go back, but anybody that knows me knows I push back against this type of stuff from conservatives all the time like i am not for this um bringing in conservatives into our church whether it was turning point usa which they have a whole christian side of turning point usa which i got hip to it so i'm a little more open even to that but even that i was i pushed back on i was like i'm not a big fan of that at all i don't think that's good these people um can sometimes grift the church and things like that. And politicians do this all the time where they'll come to churches and stuff like that, especially black churches. But we largely as the church give this a pass. But you'll see this happen quite often where you'll have pastors who, you know, are supporting these candidates and they'll have them come in and they'll pray and they'll start speaking like you be a David to the Goliaths and a Nehemiah and stuff like that. When you have this pastor that is a politician who it has very ungodly policies, <laughs> who, you know, is pro-choice as a pastor. So there, there are things, it's just always weird when you start to incorporate this into the church. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't make you a, a Christian or anything like that, but I'm just saying this is, this should be called out equally. We got to be consistent. We have to be consistent all across the board. And this stuff goes under the radar. I bet most, most of us don't even see these clips. 
for Moses who's willing to lead people to a brighter future. We thank Moses? you even right now, God, for this Come leader on that now, you have called unto Come on, in man. the presence of Raphael Warnock, Father. We pray your blessings upon him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Father. We lift him before you and we claim it as done in the name of Jesus. We give God praise. We thank God even right That's now in one. Jesus' name. Come on, church. Thank God. Christian see, leader. He's got a bunch of leaders standing behind him and he's shouting out. Joshua had to ask the people, which side do you want? Which God are you going to serve? Choose ye this day whom you'll serve. Walker, Herschel Walker, or Warnock, Raphael Warnock. As Whoa. for me in our house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to vote for Warnock. It's our That's time wow. because it's God's time. Here, watch, on, let, watch this how do I clip. Get over here? Joshua had to ask the people, which side are you on? Which God are you going to serve? Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Walker or Warnock? Choose ye this day who you're gonna serve, Walker or Warnock. Like we we people drill into conservative pastors, and rightfully so, that be like, if you vote Democrat, you're not a real Christian and all this stuff. But this largely gets ignored where you'll get these, whether it's black pastors or like, especially in the black church, where these same type of comments will be made. And I'm just sitting here like Come on now, dog. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm like, I beg your pardon. I, I beg I your literally, pardon. I beg your pardon. I'm just like serving none of them, regardless of how you vote, serving none of them to begin with. But you see how like, and that's a bigger issue that I'm sure we're going to talk about this in a channel, like where the pulpit is a very powerful place. That's why they use the phrase in politics uh, with the president, like the bully pulpit, because the pulpit is a very influential space where what the pastor says can really kind of coerce people into action. So these churches play a vital role in influencing believers, politically even. As for me and our house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to vote for Warnock. We're going to work for Warnock. <laughs> wait, wait, so, wait, so voting for Warnock is serving the Lord now, bro? We're going to march for Warnock. We're going to we pray for Warnock. Pray? We're going to vote for Warnock. And we're going to keep on moving until justice <laughs> rolls down like waters and Whoa. righteousness like an ever flowing stream. God has called us for such a time <laughs> as this. And God, no. we will meet the challenge. We no. will send the message to America. We will send the message to Donald Trump. And we certainly will See, send the uh, message uh, to Herschel Walker. See, that bias that bias came out. You, we saw it now. We saw the agenda. We saw all of that. I just don't think that's a good look for the church. Like, I don't think that's a good look. I don't think it's a problem to have. You don't. It's not a problem to have your own political opinion. But like, I just don't think that that's the look that the church needs. I think it doesn't help. doesn't unify. Now, whoever was on the conservative side of this church, they're probably leaving. Or they may not be there to begin with. That's probably, probably the problem. It's part of the problem. And we're just getting more and more divided. This just is adding to it. And even just this assumption that all conservatives want, you know, black people not to have justice or to be, um, you know, persecuted. It's just a gross misunderstanding, especially even when you look at the numbers of people who are becoming conservative. And I'm not a conservative, but I'm just saying, like, it's just all. That we have been on the battlefield for too long. We're not going back. We are not going to allow our children to go back. We are not going to allow our votes to be denied. That's why we turned out this weekend. And I'm... Now, here's the funny thing, though, because it wasn't like, like he was going up against another black man in Herschel Walker. Now, do I think Herschel Walker was largely a puppet politician? Yes. I probably said too much even by saying that. So sorry if you were a Herschel guy, but I don't know if anybody... Who was actually a Herschel person anyway? Whatever. But I do think he was a puppet, and most people probably would agree with that on both sides. He was a puppet for uh, the right. But it's like, come on now. Like, he was going up against a black man at the end. Like, it just, it's just stuff like this, I don't think is the way, even if we should talk politics in church. Some people argue for that. This isn't the way. When anything near this happened with President Trump, and I didn't like it when it happened with President Trump, I wasn't in favor of that either. When there are church services and he's called out and you're the anointed mm -hmm. one and you're going to lead the nation four more years. And so I didn't like that either. I write about it in my book about political seduction. That's yeah. one of the issues that I took when we look to him. And, he, and Dr. Michael Brown actually is a very good speaker on this because he, the book is right there in the background, Political Seduction in the Church. He wrote a book, mostly like probably 85, 90% pushing back against conservative Christians. So you can't look at him and be like, he has this agenda to attack the left because he did a book criticizing the right wing's like Christian side that was just like obsessed with Trump. 
a man in this way or put a man in this position in this exalted way or the anointed one for this hour when we're praying over in, in church services. I didn't like that yeah, either. I don't like but it. But again, this has been a pattern. This has been something that's happened on the Christian left, political left for many, many years. It's just part and parcel of church life in some circles. Yep. And on the Christian right, it's mainly on the white side and Christian left, mainly on the black side. But the color is not the issue. It's the, the merging yeah, of not. politics with the gospel. That's yep. the issue. Both the wrong. So how, how, Check this out. Beloved, God has shown America that he's still in control. The hundreds of millions of dollars, and I ain't never figured out why they would spend hundreds of millions of dollars for a job that paid 250000 <laughs> Power. They didn't care what Herschel Walker had done with his wife, with the guns, with the lies, with the check. They didn't care. Into All that. they wanted was control of the Senate. And they didn't care about his morality. They didn't care about his ethics. 88% of the evangelicals, the right wing evangelicals, voted for Herschel Walker. But here's the thing with that. Like, yes, like, okay, you may disagree with that because you see can see through what the whole agenda is with, like, Herschel. I mean, here's the thing. The Republicans didn't even want Herschel Walker to win it. It was actually, if you really pay close attention to what happened, it was actually Trump that endorsed him, which got him over the hump. A lot of people that Trump endorsed were the ones that ended up at the end and they got their butts kicked because a lot of people were down on him. So the point, but the point I'm making by even saying that much is like, this wasn't the number one choice on the list. This was Trump's number one choice, which is why they got to that point and why they got smacked largely. Most of them, it's only like a handful, maybe one or two that actually won their um their midterm elections so the, this is just such a bad <laughs> such a bad argument even even that even on the merits of it it's so bad and it also just, it just screams of partisanship that i don't feel like we as the church i don't feel like that was god's will for us or intent i just think this is this is so off man this is off do me a favor guys if you're enjoying this hit that thumbs up if you haven't already make sure you like this video and if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button you're missing out and we got a lot of content coming on the way but let's continue this 88 percent on it and then somebody's church this morning talking about praise the lord what's wrong with that like what who who cares who you vote for i mean yeah i yeah, there could be some wisdom in not voting Democrat. There could be some wisdom in not voting Republican at a given time. At the end of the day, like, I just think that this is totally something just that's politics divide society. And it's definitely going to divide the church. We got to be very careful about that. We got to get back to preaching the Bible. He has more to say. I just want to get to um, all of these. Uh, this one, is this one? Yeah, I think this is uh, William, William Murphy. I've been very disappointed. Like, I didn't know... William, I know he has some of his music, he makes good music, but once I started hearing some of the stuff he was saying as a pastor about like um like the pro-choice stuff and all of that, it turned me completely off from him. But check this out. So y'all telling me there are miracles all over this room tonight? Listen, the spirit of God is here. And listen, we're gonna pause for just a moment. And I believe with all of my heart that God is all right with this, that God would have mm. us to mix worship and justice and now notice that in the black church they all use this word justice as they use the word justice as a means of them spouting off political beliefs now i'm not trying to i'm not trying to single out black church i'm just saying that you it's a reason why most of these examples are this way because you see it more you see this the most in that demographic just like in predominantly white churches you see conservative politicians propped up in the messages and sermons. So I'm, I'm not trying to say all black churches, but I'm just using this so that we can have a legit conversation. Politics and legislation. I was having a conversation just a little earlier tonight, and this should have always originated in the house of God. If we gonna win this election, it's going to be because God is with us. If we? <laughs> what is up with that? And I'm decreeing and declaring that folk who had no oh. intention they go that decreeing and decreeing and declaring. Um, they go that decreeing and declaring. Untitled. He he'll know what I'm talking about. But see, you see, we see here it come. On voting for Raphael Warnock, are gonna get in the voting booth, and the spirit of God is gonna arrest them. Can I get somebody else to decree it and declare it? That God is turning the hearts of people in the direction 
I ain't telling nobody who to vote for. I'm just telling you what I sense no. by the Spirit of God. Because I can't tell you who to vote for, but I can tell you what I believe. That people <laughs> are going to get in the voting booth and their hearts are going to be turned towards God's man. <laughs> People's hearts are going to be turned towards God's who? I beg your pardon? God's man. He's doing the exact same mistake people made with Trump and other po politicians. God's man. Now, granny. Warnock won, but to call him God's man, to call anybody God's man, I think it's just putting somebody on an unnecessary platform where they can't live up to it, one. And two, it's just like, that is just so, I mean, that is, man, that is so off. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Let's, I want to call to the stage, there are so many pastors who literally preached in their church ran to the airport, jumped on a plane, and flew to Atlanta to stand with our senator tonight. And I wanna invite every one of those pastors, whether you flew here, whether you drove here, whether you got here on a skateboard or a go-kart, I don't know how you got here tonight, but I wanna invite every pastor to come to the stage tonight and let's stand together. So these are all Christian leaders, most of them in church services, church settings, worship settings, bringing God, the gospel, politics, Raphael Warnock, all together. And remember, he's pro-abortion. Re remember, he supports, quote, a woman's right to have an abortion. Re remember, he, he is an advocate of LGBTQ plus activists, not just around loving people, but the, the activist causes. He's an advocate of those things and being endorsed as God's man and the spirit's on him. Let me say this. If the same thing was happening with Herschel Walker, even though he's pro-life, yeah, he's had his own failings, we understand that. But if the th same things were happening in conservative evangelical churches with whites or blacks, or, or it doesn't matter who or what, and they were doing this over Herschel Walker, I'd be just as uncomfortable. The fact yeah. is I've called it out on the right, now I'm calling it out on the left. So I I've got one more example, not about Pastor Warnock. but All of that being said, again, this isn't to single out any one demographic. I just think the bigger picture for the body of Christ is we can't allow politicians to grift and come into the church and not really speak to the actual needs of the church. Even if politicians want to come in and talk to like black community members and things like that, if you're going to let them come in, there has to be more tangibles to that specific community, the actual needs and issues within it. So if you see a low if you're in a low income area as a politician and you're going to be local to that area, speak to some of the local issues that actually matter that are less about the, you know, buzzwords and things like that, but maybe speak to the things that actually will help them. And that'd be one thing. But then when you have these pastors who I care more about, like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, like this is disgusting. And I think the issue comes in not when Christians have opinions about politicians, but it comes in when pastors have these positions because they literally divide up the church and they really put people who may have a difference of opinion when it comes to that in a bad situation. And it just does not do well for anyone. So that's all I really want to say about it. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Make sure you leave a comment, hit the thumbs up if you haven't already on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss on any videos that come out. Uh, Glock's loaded to the opponent's I'm a reach. Stop sewing to get a bonus, that's a reach. I was born to meet the moment, so yeah. why? Feast, no yeah. life, feast, you know yeah. why? Feast, Glock's